And good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for Casual Coffee with Ken. My name is Ken, and welcome to Friday. We made it. It's the end of a long week. They all seem much longer than they used to, don't they? Uh, that's probably because things are not what they once were. But uh, we made it. It's Friday at last. I hope your week has been good, that you've been getting through this whole mess uh, with uh, as little disruption uh, as possible to your mental health. Because I realize this can be very draining for, for many of us as it has obviously turned everyone's life uh, upside down. So, but thank you for joining me today. So the point of my broadcast normally is to share with you fun, interesting, and uh, sometimes even inspiring new stories, but they're, they're always positive, and I do that to counteract the flood of negativity, uh, negative news that we see on the local and network stations. I mean, there's a difference between staying informed and then just getting overwhelmed uh, by, by everything that's going on. So I started this to help people begin their day on a more positive note, just to kind of set the tone for people uh, so that that they would have a better chance of actually, you know, being able to approach the day positively. It's really hard when you start, excuse me, when you start to start off uh, with the negative news and then just your, your whole mood can spiral from there. But today, today, you're in for a treat because I'm trying to do something a little bit different with the Friday shows. So uh, today we're going to watch a movie. Not a full movie, obviously, because this is only a half hour show. Uh, but if you're not familiar with the concept of public domain, it's a very cool one. And basically, the short definition of that is that movies, books, TV shows, that are past a certain age uh, fall out of copyright protection and into the public domain. So they can be reused, remixed, redone, rebroadcast by anybody in the public um, without any legal ramifications. So one such movie, uh, it was actually a, a believe it was a TV show and then it was made into a movie these this particular this particular group I'm talking about here is um, Flash Gordon and I'm not talking about the cheesy but still classic 1980 Flash Gordon movie which I saw as a kid and yes I, I loved it because you don't know any better <laughs> uh, but yes uh, these are predate that by a, a, a long time the old Flash Gordon serials that they used to run uh, before the main film. So you'd go to the movie, right? You'd go to the movies, you had to go there, sit down, and you'd have one movie and one movie theater, and generally you had one screen. And they would run these shorts before the main film. And sometimes they were cartoons, Sometimes they were weird, almost like product placement ads by, by groups like 3M. But they, they, for a while, were running these Flash Gordon movies, these little mini movies. And they were broken up so you would watch, watch it before the main film. And then the next time you went and saw a new movie, there would be a new episode. And these Flash Gordon serials are are so cheesy the the dialogue isn't great the special effects are well as you would expect from these are really old they're really like 1930s or something it's really crazy but they directly inspired george lucas he regularly cites these flash gordon movies as inspiration for what he did with star wars so 
I thought it would be fun on Fridays to just do Flash Gordon Fridays and and watch a uh, an episode of that. So Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe has fallen into the public domain and it's now been broken up into, I think, 12 chapters. So we're going to watch chapter one today. I will warn you that the audio isn't stellar. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it's old. <laughs> and so I've cranked up the volume as much as I dare so that you can hear it and, and hopefully you'll still be able to understand it. Uh, but again, it's, uh, I don't know. I thought it would be fun. It's, I used to watch these as a kid when I would go over to my grandparents' house. And, uh, and so I just have fond memories. So I will stop talking now and we'll just go ahead and start the movie. I won't be making any uh, audio comments, but if you have anything, you know, if you want to share your thoughts on the movie, I can still see your comments in my, uh, in my monitor over here. So feel free to comment and then I can bring those on the screen and stuff. But without further ado, here is chapter one of Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe. I hope you guys like it. Okay, so that doesn't seem to be working on my end. <laughs> this figures. It worked fine yesterday. Um, great. Okay. Um, since I can't see anything, let me... This is... I'm sorry. This is what happens when you do a live show. Things don't always work the way you think they're going to, and I'm not exactly sure why this is happening. So give me one second here and let's see if I can fix this. <laughs> okay, so um, let me try something else here. Uh, in the meantime, why don't you tell me how you've been spending your week? <laughs> Uh, while I try to figure this out. All right, let me try this one more time.
Okay, that's not going to work today. <laughs> I will have to uh, play with this a little bit more over the weekend and see what happens. But okay, my apologies, no movie today. Uh, man, that's disappointing because it worked like a charm yesterday. So I guess we will go to plan B. <laughs> I did have a, a couple of stories, I think, lined up that I was going to use on Monday, but I can use them now. Uh, it's been this kind of week. Lots of weird technical difficulties, and I'm not exactly sure why it's been that. I mean, all week long with my phone, uh, with, well, now with the broadcast software and just with so many things, uh, it's just been a weird time. And I'm not sure what has changed. See, right now I can't even get uh, my web browser to open. Ah, well, I can fill time here somehow. Um, one thing that we did do this week, which was really fun, is Karina baked cookies, and they're really good cookies. They are peanut butter with chocolate chips and caramel chips and oatmeal. And she used two kinds of peanut butter. She used half smooth peanut butter and half uh, crunchy peanut butter. And the uh, caramel chips are amazing. And it's just, even the next day, they are soft and, and wonderful. The texture is just perfect. And uh, I really appreciated, the, actually, the mix of peanut butter. Because originally the recipe called for just smooth peanut butter. But... Uh, but she used smooth and crunchy, and boy, boy, are they good. I guess I could get one and show you guys, because it's pretty, pretty impressive. Look at that cookie. Look at it. It is just full of all kinds of chocolate chips. And you can't, I wish you could see them a little bit better, but there's chocolate chips and caramel chips in there, and so good. And now, of course, I have to eat that because I broke it in half. Oh, darn. But it'll be good. Yeah, this is weird. My, uh, my browser isn't even... Oh. Duh, Ken. Uh, I shouldn't have gotten out of bed today. <laughs> All right, here we go. Do -do 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 -do. All right, so this story is really cool because, again, it's a really good example of uh, someone, uh, a teenager, really thinking outside the box and taking a negative for them and making it into a positive that is huge and is is having a, an enormous impact on his communities. So uh, this kid is a teenager and he cannot drive. And recently, because of the COVID outbreak, his uh, lacrosse season was canceled. So he was really bummed out about that. I don't know if you remember being a teenager in high school, but for those 
who were into sports at that time to have your season just canceled that can be a huge blow i mean that's it's it's disappointing uh, and he was upset about it for a while but then he he decided to use one of his other skills to do something that would benefit the local hospitals in his area he's a pilot he has his pilot's license so he decided he was going to fly supplies to the rural hospitals in his community and this kid is just amazing just 16 his name's tj kim and he's been flying across virginia to deliver much needed supplies to rural hospitals uh, now he attends school in bethesda maryland but his family uh, is in virginia and so he was talking to them about what he could do to kind of to do something because he was feeling stir crazy and useless so uh, with his family's blessing they came up with what they're calling uh, operation sos or supplies over skies and so each week according to this article from sunnyskies.com he flies gloves masks gowns and other equipment to small hospitals and he might have expected they were going to be grateful but i guess the the reception that he got was really it just really surprised him uh, he said uh, quote they kind of conveyed to me that they were really forgotten about everyone was wanting to send donations to big city hospitals and every hospital is hurting for supplies but it's the rural hospitals that really feel forgotten uh, and on his mode they give an example here uh, on his most recent flight he carried 3,000 gloves 1,000 head covers 500 shoe covers 50 non-surgical masks 20 pairs of protective eyewear and 10 concentrated bottles of hand sanitizer to help a hospital in Woodstock so his eventual goal is to is to make deliveries to all seven rural hospitals in Virginia that are defined as critical access hospitals and uh, I worked for hospital association for about eight years and critical access hospitals are really that designation doesn't mean a whole lot to, to most people and it, it just more than anything it affects what kind of uh, what kind of services and in some cases grant funding can be uh, distributed to a to a critical access hospital it's uh, it's it's kind of strange all these different classifications they have but I I imagine something like this could be done in Nevada uh, because we were always looking for equipment for our hospitals but especially the rural hospitals uh, I helped manage two separate federal uh, hospital preparedness grants for Nevada through the Nevada Hospital Association um, under two different directors of preparedness uh, and by far the most requested help we were asked for was equipment and training too but mostly equipment so I remember one time uh, Dr. Lake and I were driving throughout rural Nevada just making deliveries of ventilators actually which is a really surreal thing to think about now and they were always excited to to get this equipment it was rural hospitals have a hard enough time so i mean the fact that this kid is is doing something 
like this is amazing. And his father points out in the article that the hardest part of this wasn't planning out the flights <laughs> to get to the hospitals. It was gathering enough equipment to make it worthwhile to do the deliveries and to, to actually contribute something substantial to the hospitals in need. But I, I love that he's doing this. I mean, it's, again, there's a stereotype with the uh, younger generation that, you know, the teenagers are largely, good morning, Charles, good to see you. Uh, the teenagers are, are self-obsessed and they don't really think about anything that doesn't affect them directly. But I think, especially in the last 20 years, there's been a real shift in the younger generations. I think they're a lot more socially aware and more socially conscious than, than I know I was at, at that age. Uh, so kudos to him, kudos to many others like him who were doing uh, these types of things during this pandemic. I've highlighted a few stories over the last couple of weeks about uh, teenagers helping out in various different ways. So I, I particularly enjoyed this story and, uh, yeah, it was it was fun. So I wanted to share that with you because how could that not be uplifting? I think that's a, that's a good way to start our day. Okay, the next one, uh, I believe it was on yesterday's show. I shared with all of you that uh, since Disneyland has been closed and Disney World, all the Disney kingdoms are closed right now, uh, a lot of people were missing the Disney churros. And then Disney decided to be really nice and share their recipe for churros. And I went ahead and linked to that in yesterday's episode. So you can find the links uh, on Facebook and on my YouTube channel, wherever you're watching. And they've done it again, but this time it's for something that uh, you could probably start an argument with, uh, with someone of what is the, the better dessert to have at Disneyland, but they've shared their Dole Whip recipe. And Karina and I are still kicking ourselves for not getting a Dole Whip while we were there. Uh, just kicking ourselves. So now we could try this at home, and believe me, we're going to. And I might even record my attempt at doing that because I have no business in a kitchen, but I'm going to try this anyway, I think. So the first people to learn about this were the people who had downloaded the Disneyland app on their phone and for some reason might have kept it on their phone even after they their trip to Disneyland or Disney World was over. Uh, so... The recipe was delivered through a series of small slides that you could swipe through. And this, uh, this article over at uh, Deseret.com just outlines the recipe for you really simply. One big scoop of ice cream, four ounces of pineapple juice, two cups of frozen pineapple. Add all the ingredients into a blender till, and blend it until it's a thick drink. And then you add your, your swirl and you're done. So, uh, and I guess, and this is funny, I, I didn't know this, but the original Dole Whip is dairy-free. So you will want to use dairy-free ice cream, I guess. Uh, and it looks like there's a couple of other recipes, uh, Dole's official recipe and then their official soft serve mix. So those are both linked. And again, I will link to this article for you uh, in the notes after the, the show today so that you can try it out. And yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. How could I mess this up? Maybe we'll find out because I'm really bad in the kitchen. I'm good at cleaning up in the kitchen. That's what I do. That's my contribution to... Uh, to my marriage is Karina cooks amazing food and bakes amazing desserts and I clean it all up because that's my skill. 
but uh, but yeah, so that is definitely good news for a lot of people. There's been a lot more emphasis uh, and time really for us to rediscover things like baking and cooking because some of us all we have is time, so that's uh it's pretty cool. Okay, and then the last story for today. Uh, it's, I don't know that it's inspiring, but it's refreshing. And I, uh, I gotta give, give kudos to this bar owner. Um, there's a bar in Georgia. It's been open for a long time. And people would nail dollar bills to the walls and just sign them. And that was kind of a tradition. And they would just do that. It was a way for the customers to kind of make their mark and, and leave their mark at this very popular bar. Uh, and of course, stay-at-home orders uh, have really hurt uh, bar businesses uh, and restaurants and but again this is a story about someone kind of thinking outside the box and thinking about well what could they do for the people around them in this case it was the employees of this particular bar and the owner just really stepped up so her name is Jennifer Knox uh, and she's in Tybee Island Georgia she had to, to close her, her restaurant, bar and restaurant called The Sand Bar. And one day while she was just in there, she looked around and, and realized just, there just might be a lot of money on the walls of her establishment. So you can see in this picture here, all the dollar bills I don't even know that they're all dollars, but you can see all of them. Just nailed to the ceiling, nailed, you know, stapled to the walls. And according to this article at CNN, it said some of the money has been there for over a decade. For nearly 15 years, people have been doing this. They've been signing, writing on the dollar bill and stapling it to the walls and ceilings. And uh, she has been running the bar for six years as the owner. She had worked there as a bartender before she bought the business uh, her, with her and her mother. So she got some people together and it took them about three days to unstaple all of the, the bills, the dollar bills. And some of them are really old. They've been there for over a decade. And uh, she, she said that some of the bills had, quote, dozens of staples in them. And not all of the currency was American. There was some, some uh, money from overseas, too, which was really cool. Uh, and so it took about a week and a half to clean all of the bills off, because you can imagine how dirty they were. And in total, they collected from the walls and the ceiling $3,714. This is a picture from... Twitter on there. Look at all that. $3,714. And um, some of the customers heard about what she was doing and actually pitched in to the cause. And so she was able to distribute over $4,000 to her staff. And wow. Good thing there was never a fire there. But yeah, that's that's incredible. That's awesome. That's something that she absolutely did not have to do. She was under no obligation to share that money with anybody. I don't know that I would have thought to even take it down. I think part of my brain would have thought, well, probably can't even use it because all the money is marked up and filthy. And But no, she's all, yep, yeah, let's do it. Let's take it all down. So She's not sure she's going to start up the tradition again after things, you know, open back up. Uh, but 
that's a happy ending for her and her staff, at least for, for, for a little while. And again, kudos to her for, for thinking of the people that, let's face it, her employees make that business possible because if she didn't have any employees, she wouldn't have a business. So it's awesome and amazing to see that there are some establishments that get that McDonald's. I'm talking to you, Golden Arches. You know who you are. Some business owners get that their employees are assets. So kudos to uh, kudos to Jennifer Knox. I appreciate that she is doing the right thing. So that's it. It's already 10 o'clock. The week has come to an end for us here on this show. I will be back here on Monday, and I swear to you I'm going to figure this this video thing out and figure out why Flash Gordon didn't play, because I really want to do this. Anyway, if you wouldn't mind, if you had fun today, if you enjoy what I'm trying to do with this show, which is promote positivity by reporting positive news to you, um, do me a favor. After the live show ends, it will stay up as a link on Facebook and, uh, and YouTube and Twitter. Please share the, the link with your friends. Tell them there's this guy in Reno who's just trying to help improve people's mornings. Uh, and I'd appreciate that because uh, I love doing this. And the more people that watch it, the better. So anyways, thank you so much again. I hope you all have an incredible weekend. Get lots of rest and do something fun. Until Monday at 930 Pacific time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care. And remember, when you can choose to be anything in life, choose to be kind. Because now more than ever, kindness matters. All right, take care, everybody. See you Monday.